Hello everyone, uh, I'm Gerge Kisch, uh, I'm the co-founder and uh, CTO of Midran, and today I will be talking about uh, mobile gateways for road to system with Xeno. Okay, uh, can you still see my screen? So maybe you could change for me. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, about Midron, uh, we uh, founded our business 15 years ago, and uh, uh, in the in in those years, uh, we have worked on uh, quite a few different uh, uh, areas and projects. We started with outsourced uh, system development for for uh, for years. We worked uh, on MIPS based uh, systems. We uh, we. Uh, implemented the V8 uh, JavaScript engine for MIPS or worked on the implementation, also worked on Android implementations for MIPS. And uh, after that, we started our first own product, Midron for iOS, which uh, was a, a, a product to, to allow developers uh, building uh, iOS applications in Java. And this was acquired by Intel and uh, later released the smooth iOS engine and as an open source project. In more recent years, uh, uh, we worked in, in the automotive AR system development uh, with a company called Wayray, and who, who are working on, on uh, the holographic uh, AR screens for, for the automotive industry. And uh, during this latest project, we, we came uh, 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 experienced with, with ROS. We have been working with ROS1 and ROS2 with uh, a, a lot of uh, major um, uh, uh, releases, and, and uh, we, we have been using ROS in, in quite a few different uh, configurations uh, with a lot of different backends, and this is how we actually found Xeno and, and started using uh, Xeno. Uh, so, the statement itself, what we have to solve is that we have a, a system that is based on on, on uh, ROS middleware, and uh, and we need to access it from from uh, from mobile devices. And the standard solution for for this is basically that we have a mobile gateway, it can be REST protocol or WebSocket or whatever, but still uh, there is a a custom mobile gateway uh, which uh, which has to provide the necessary functionality for the mobile devices so the mobile devices actually have to implement a different uh, api and cannot use uh, the, the standard uh, ROS features or, or cannot use them easily and so the desired solution would be actually to be able to use the ROS uh, uh, APIs and, and, and ROS protocols uh, on the mobile devices as well, and all the features of the ROS middleware. And, uh, and to do this, uh, we, we actually have to uh, look, in, look at the communication landscape, how the communication works in, in ROS2. So as, as Jeff already mentioned, uh, uh, the ROS2 uh, framework has, has a uh, uh, an API to, to plug in multiple backends, and uh, and uh, most of the standard backends use the DDS protocol. And uh, uh, there are also other other uh, backends available. For example, Isorix, which is a shared memory base, uh, and there is also an experimental Xeno backend available. Uh, however, uh, when we are using uh, ROS to DDS backend. Uh, the DDS is, is uh, uh, works best uh, in a single host scenario or in a LAN based environment where there are no uh, ma multiple subnets. Or as as, uh, as Jeff uh, went into more detail about this, uh, or like with wireless networks and and uh, and uh, and all the problems that that can come up in in this case. And uh, so the, the standard solution is to to uh, solve this is basically to use a VPN and uh, and package the DDS traffic inside a VPN solution. But this is not applicable in a mobile environment. Uh, uh, while technically it's feasible to install VPN clients on on a on a mobile device, 
but it uh, it it makes the whole system much more complex and and uh, and uh, uh, it, it's not not really what we want. So we know to the rescue. So so the first solution that uh, that we have come up with is basically just use uh, the the Zeno backend all the way, uh, and uh, basically on on the mobile device we can uh, uh, we can we can uh, uh, use uh, the ROS APIs for for the Android application. We can use the Java bindings or the C plus plus bindings uh, to to implement our application, and and then in the backend. Uh, we use the Zeno backend, and uh, and there is a Zeno router that that will uh, that will uh, provide the connectivity uh, with with uh, with the main system, which also uses the the Zeno backend itself. So so in this case, uh, we have an end-to-end Zeno-based solution, uh, but there are some challenges as of uh, right now. So the RM with Zeno implementation is still experimental. And uh, when we have an existing system with its own release schedule and and uh, and uh, uh, its own set of risks to manage, uh, this is a large change to to, to it. So, so uh, this has to be planned carefully and and uh, and th and it just takes more time to implement. Um, so there is a option uh, is to. Using a Xeno-based gateway and leveraged uh, the Xeno DDS plugin, uh, where uh, the mobile de device still can use the the Xeno backend and uh, uh, communicate with the Xeno router. But then uh, inside uh, the main system, the DDS plugin uh, can be used, and and uh, all the other components of the system can still use the standard DDS backend that they have been using. It can be Cyclone DDS or FastRTPS or, or whichever uh, DDS backend is uh, working best for them. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, for the mobile, we can still leverage the, the nice features of the Zeno protocol so it, that it works uh, very nicely over uh, rooted networks. Uh, and and uh, and and uh, uh, that it is more optimized for uh, for such uh, uh, wider network use cases. So uh, the advantages of this uh, solution is that it's a minimal change to the existing system. It can even be an optional change. So in some cases we install this uh, component with with the external connectivity, and in some cases we just don't. Uh, and it can also be a first step toward the system-wide Zeno adoption. So, so uh, um, with this uh, limited uh, change, uh, with this limited component, we, uh, the the developers can can uh, get to know how uh, Zeno itself, and and then when they are more comfortable with it, they can they can do a system-wide rollout. So the next step is. Is uh, basically to to get uh, the Zeno backend for us to to a to a production ready level, and uh, and uh, the current experimental version is using the C API and it's written in C++. But for the production ready backend, uh, we are considering a, a, a implementation in safe Rust. So essentially, the the RMV API API for for uh, for us too is, is a C API, and and uh, uh, we need to implement a, a, a safe Rust uh, wrapper for that, and then we can implement that safe Rust RMB API uh, based on the Xeno primitives. And uh, uh, for the plan is that that uh, um, this this uh, backend would be uh, compatible with the DDS backends uh, by default, but uh, in a pure uh, system when when every uh, component is using Zeno, then uh, uh, more optimizations uh, can be available. For example, Zeno supports uh, shared memory transport as well, so this this can this can uh, speed up uh, the delivery of large messages, for example. Uh, the next uh, uh, point is also to make uh, uh, 
using ROS2 and you know easier to use in, in mobile applications uh, on Android, on iOS, or even in a, a cross-platform use case uh, like with React Native. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention, and, and uh, I, I will be uh, around for, for any questions in the chat.